Hey peeps, welcome to another video. Today it is part one of the McCall's 7634 sew along. So this sew along has been in the making for a while. I chose the pattern out originally in March and I did make it up, the trousers at least, and I wasn't in love with the way they looked. I still needed to make a few more alterations. So I went back, I made those alterations and I have made this set and I am so pleased that I did because I absolutely love it. So part one is going to be talking you through finding your size, tracing your pattern and making the alterations that I've made because the original pattern is a low or high hip, sits on your high hip, which is something that I would never wear. So I have altered it to be high waisted. So I'm gonna talk you through that alteration as well. So let's get started. For this tutorial you will need your pattern, fabric, matching thread, cord, eyelets, cord ends, scissors, paper and fabric, marking tool of choice, pins, 2 inch elastic, you're also going to need iron, ironing board, you're also going to need sewing machine and some pattern making paper. So as ever, the first thing that you want to do is iron all of your pattern pieces. The next thing that we're going to do is go through the pieces that are available and write a list of all the ones that we need. So I am going to be making A and F. So I've gone through here and I have made a note of each number that has either an A or an F. And if it doesn't have an A or an F, that means that you need it for every single view. So I've written down my pattern piece numbers and I'm going to tick those off, cross them out as I go along and trace them out. And again, I do this so that I don't forget anything because ask me how I know. I have on many occasions thought I've traced everything. Turns out I haven't and I have to go back and unfold and re-iron re everything. So the next thing that we need to do is work out which size we need to make. So... According to this, I need a size 16 bust, a size 12 waist, and a size 18 hip. For the hips, I, we, I only have the bundle that goes up to size 12, and the, the finished hip measurement is 39 and a half, so I'm going to have to add a lot to this to get it to something that is going to be flattering and comfortable for me to wear. But I want to see how much ease they've built in. So the size 12 ends up with a 39 and a half inch finished measurement, and the size 12 hip on here is a 36 so that means they've got three and a half inches of ease built into it which actually for these kind of trousers seems pretty standard to me i'm happy with that so i'm going to try and build mine up so that i can get the same amount of ease which means i'm going to need to add probably about four four or five inches to my pattern piece yeah maybe i should have asked for the larger size but then the top wouldn't have been right for me over here we have the top piece the finished bust that I want to go for is the 12 and then the waist I think is probably the 10 according to the pattern I need the size 16 bust but I don't have that I got it goes up to the 12 for here for the 12 is a 34 and on here that means there's a 39 and a half inch finished measurement which is five and a half inches of ease which it's, it is a sweatshirt so I understand that but for me that still would be too baggy this is going to give me about an inch and a half of finish of wearing ease which I'm actually happier with and on the waist it says I need a size 12 the 12 is a 26 and a half inch finish measurement on the envelope and the 12 here is a 39 inch finish measurement so it's basically straight up and down from the bust to the waist that's okay but I would prefer a little bit more shaping in this there's 13 inches of, of ease in at the waist here which again is a little bit too much for me so I'm going to go down actually think to the size 4 because again I just prefer my clothes to have a little bit more shape in them you can totally um, go for whichever size that you want so you need to use your judgment and you can use this chart here and the finished measurements on the pattern pieces to see the amount of ease that they are recommending for the pattern and then you can use your judgment as to whether you go with what they recommend go a little bit smaller go a little bit bigger if you want to but for me I as you know I like a little bit of shaping in at the waist because my hips are so much bigger than my waist I find that I have it gives me more definition if I at least try to emphasize the waist area so that's what I'm going to do I think I'm going to go for the size six just to make myself 
just make life a little bit easier so I'm not trying to scooch everything in but it is fairly straight up and down so it should be okay. Okay, so now that I've cut all of my pattern pieces out, I need to make some alterations. First off, I'm going to work on the top because I need to alter the length of this. For as much as it is cropped, if I leave it like this, it will be super, super cropped on me and it would come to around about here. So I need to add an inch of length to the torso of the pattern, the bodice pieces. And I also need to add length to the arms as well because I like my arms to come to around about here, especially on jumpers. So there are... There is a length and a shortened line on the sleeve pattern, but there isn't on the front and back bodice. And I don't want to interfere with the lacing part of the pattern. So I'm going to actually kind of like pick a spot, maybe about two inches up and, and lengthen from there. So I'm going to draw a right angle using the pattern edge. I'm going to draw a line all the way across. And that's going to be my length and shortened line. And then lining that up on the back, I'm going to just do the same thing, lengthen across there. So they're going to be my length and shorten lines. Now I want to add an inch of length. So scrap piece of paper, I'm going to draw a rectangle an inch wide. Now the important thing that you want to do when you're doing anything like this is make sure that you have a perpendicular line running through your lengthen and shorten line and we do because we have the front fold edge here so we've got the grain line or the cut on the fold mark and also the front edge which is a 90 degree angle to the lengthen and shorten line that we've got there if you don't have that all you need to do is draw yourself in a reference mark like that and make sure that it is perpendicular to the I hope I'm using perpendicular right because otherwise I've said that a lot but it's it's creating a an axis through the length and short line that you have drawn. So I'm going to cut through my length and line and I'm going to stick down the new cut edge to the bottom of the one inch rectangle that you drew on your scrap piece of paper. Lots of tape the whole way along making sure that everything is lying nice and flat. You then want to take your straight edge and that reference line that you drew in, draw that up through your one inch box. Take your other piece of your pattern and line up the cut edge with the top of the one inch rectangle that you drew earlier and tape that down. Again, making sure that everything is lying nice and flat. And then you just wanna join up the edges of your pattern. So this one's really simple because this is a straight line because it's a cut on the fold. This one has a little bit of shaping to it. So you want to just even that out like that. So I'm going to cut this new pattern piece out. And then we've lengthened the front of the bodice by an inch. So I'm going to do exactly the same to the back and also to the arm of this pattern to lengthen all of those pieces by an inch as well. I have saved the most difficult part for last because of course I have. I need to add depth to the crotch of these trousers because as much as these are low slung on the hips, I don't particularly like that style. I want them to be sat on my waist and uh, the crotch depth is way too short for that, but it's way too short for me anyway. As I have mentioned before, I have a long torso. I have also had to add three and a half inches at the hip because otherwise this would have been, would have had uh, two and a half inches of negative ease on me, which is not the look I was going for. So this underneath here, I have pinned, or oh, pinned, I have taped the side front, which is pattern piece number 14. And I've matched up the big circles here. I've, re I've, ta I've traced out the pattern piece again and I've taped it underneath it, matching up the reference points. And this is where the waist ends and then this is where the hip begins. And I need to kind of in some way, shape or form make that a smooth curve. So 
So I think maybe what I should do is actually lengthen the crotch first because that will give me a larger or a deeper plane to work with to, to, to curve this edge in as it were. So I think I'm going to do the crotch pieces first. Okay, lovely peeps. So, yes, I want to work out the crotch depth first because I'm going to lengthen that and I'm going to be lengthening that by quite a bit having done the measuring already. But the way you work out your crotch depth, or at least the way that I believe that you work out your crotch depth, because again, I am no expert. I am making this up as I go along. So the first thing I did was draw in my seam allowance along the waistline, the crotch curve, and then the inseam seam allowance. And I did that on both the back and the front pattern pieces. So there's the waist seam allowance, crotch curve seam allowance, and the inseam seam allowance. Then I took my tape measure, and on its side, I walked the tape measure around the curve so that I could get an accurate measure of how long that curve was. And the back was 10 and a quarter, and the front is eight and a quarter. So believe it or not, I can actually do that math in my head, but there is the Fraction Plus calculator. Uh, I have the app, and you can and just add those two together to give you 18 and a half, which is what I said. So the other thing that I have done is then I have measured my crotch depth, which is 29 inches, and I've done that from my waist, from the front through the, between my legs and up to the same spot on the back, and that is 29 inches with the tape measure pulled taut against my body. So with some wearing ease, I've put in two inches of wearing ease, my crotch depth is 31 inches that I want, which is markedly different from the 18 and a half inches. We're adding a lot of depth <laughs> to this crotch. But the other thing you need to bear in mind is that this pattern also comes with a waistband. So I have my waistband mesh, um, pattern piece here and it's going to, the waistband is, this is a guide for the cuffing, which is going to be folded in half. So I have drawn in the seam allowance along the bottom of this curve and then from the fold line in the middle of the waistband pattern to the seam allowance is two and a half inches. So we need to add in the waistband is two and a half inches. So we've got to add that to our 18 and a half inch crotch depth. So two and a half, which gives us a total of 21 inches already. Now, as I mentioned, this pattern is to be worn on the low hips and that's not me i don't I, I i would not feel comfortable in this i would much rather have one that comes up to my waist this lady has a very short torso by the looks of things or oh, this has been specifically made for her but yeah i i want mine to come up way higher than that we have the crotch depth with wearing ease for that I would like which is 31 inches minus the 21 inches which means that I now need to add 10 inches to the crotch depth and to split that between the back and the front means that I need to add five inches of length to the front panel and five inches of length to the back panel you don't need to worry about balancing the pattern to make sure that there's more room in the back than there is in the front because when you've taken the measurements you'll see that they've done that for you already the back crotch depth is ten and a quarter. The front is the front crotch depth is eight and a quarter. So they've already taken into account the way that they balance patterns. So you just need to add the extra length that you want on. So I'm actually going to go and grab my 24 by 6 inch quilting ruler because that will be much easier to draw a 5 inch box through than it will be with this. So I shall be right back. Okay, so I have my scrap piece of paper here. I have drawn myself two lines that are parallel to each other and 5 inches apart. So as I have mentioned before, the important thing is that you want to make sure that there is a perpendicular line to your lengthen and shorten lines so that you can accurately match your pattern pieces together when you've cut them out so this is also happens to be the grain line which is great so i am going to cut through my length and shorten line oh and i just want to point out as well that because i was going from a size six at the waist to a size sort of 18 at the hips that curve was huge and quite dramatic the fact that we're going to add so much length into it will mean that i can make that much smoother so it isn't quite so uh, when when it's made and that by the way is a technical term <laughs> so I'm going to take the cut edge 
of that pattern piece and line it up with one of those lines that I have drawn five inches apart from each other and tape it down, making sure that everything is lying nice and flat. Take my straight edge of my French curve and use that to put this registration line in so that we've got something to match the bottom of our pattern piece up with. Take the cut edge of that pattern piece, line that up with the line that we drew five inches away and stick that down. And again, you want to make sure everything is nice and flat. And then we need to smooth out the lines. And I've done the back piece purposefully first because once we've got this line smoothed out, it's going to help us work out how the front pattern piece is going to look. So the length and the shortened line is just below where the, the crotch curve starts curving underneath. So we want to use this bottom piece to line up with the top piece to make that a little straighter and it doesn't matter if it's actually straight. You want to just move over the notches if they disappear. But so that's our new front piece. And then this side piece, this is a very dramatic curve and we want this is what we want to end up with down here. And this, this out here was, I did because, you know, I needed to get to that point really quickly, but we can make it a lot smoother, a lot, lot smoother. So we're actually taking off quite a lot from here, which is fine because whilst my curve is dramatic, it's not like, like uh, quite as angled, or not angled, but as dramatic as this one is. This is, this will just allow it to be a lot smoother. all the way down there. So we're going to need to tape in a little bit extra over here. Right, so now that I've got that all done, I'm going to cut out my new pattern piece and then I will do the front crotch depth, which I can then work out how the pocket's going to go in. There we go, so it's gone from a size six at the waist to the 18 at the hips in a much kind of gentler fashion, at least I think so. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna do the same to the front piece and then we're gonna work out how the front pocket comes into play. Okay, so I have evened out the crotch curve and cut that line, but I have left all the extra paper over here because we have got the pocket bag or the side front and the pocket bag to deal with. And I, yeah, we're not gonna want our pockets to be like that deep coming down that far down our hips so I've got my pocket piece traced out here and I've not I have put in where the size 6 waist finishes but I've just added loads of extra in there so that I'm going to take this underneath the pattern piece matching up the registration points so making sure that the waist is level and that the circles meet and I'm going to tape this down very gently for now just to give me a guide because we've got like I say this is where the size 6 waist finishes and then that's where the size 18 hip starts so we need to have a nice kind of curve going between those two which will give the new pocket bag opening or curve and I might I might just use, because uh, I'm going to want the back and the side, the back and the front to match. So again, I might just, so I'm laying the back piece under the front piece. And see if we can get, oh, let's not twist that, see if we can get the, curves to match up a little bit. Yeah, there we go, that's kind of a... So I'm kind of just tracing... Just using the pattern piece that I've drafted underneath as a guide 
here. That still might be a little bit too curved for my liking, so I'm gonna take that down a bit. I, like I say, I am totally guessing with this. I have no idea if what I'm doing is correct, but it's kind of giving me what I want. So I'm gonna need to take down this bit over here and here because that is going to be that pattern piece so I can take the underneath away now okay so we still have to get the bottom of our pocket bag taped in here so this is the pocket piece that I'm using to trace and I'm going to need to draft a new uh, or at least put a new one of these in because this isn't going to be quite wide enough so again I am matching up the waist and the circle and then I am just using that curve to kind of trace in where my new pocket is going to be so I'm going to need to draft a new pocket bag and a new side front piece uh, to get that where I want it to be. So I'm going to chop off the excess paper for the trousers. So that's done. And then I'm gonna remove the side front piece. And then I'm going to cut out that new curve that I cut for the, that I drew for the pocket to go in. Okay, so that's my new front piece with five inch, inches of length added and the new pocket opening cut out. Again, I have no idea if this is going to work. I'm hoping it will. Logically it will. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back underneath and match up, like I say, match up the registration marks there. So the circle and the circle underneath, they are matching up. And then I can just draw on the rest of what the side front should look like. Hopefully, yeah, that worked. So, this is our new side front piece. Add a bit more roundness to the bottom of that pocket bag. Yeah, that'll do. So I'm kind of a bit more round as the bottom of the back pocket bag with the uh, round edge of my French curve. Again, no idea if this is gonna work. So now that we have our new side front, we need to work out how our pocket bag now needs to look. So I'm going to tape down, I'm going to turn that over, I'm going to do it this way, so I'm going to take down some extra paper down here, then I'm going to lay the new side pocket over the front, matching up the curved edges because they are the same, and then I'm going to trace around the side front because this is what we're going to need our pocket back to look like I think and that what the top bit needs to look like okay. so I used the side front to trace the new bottom line and I used the front trouser panel panel to trace the new top line of what that needs to look like so I'm going to cut this one out So I'm gonna say again, I have absolutely no idea if this is the right way to do this. This just is the way that makes sense to me. So we have our pocket, which is the pocket lining, which is gonna go in first underneath our front trouser piece. That all fits in nicely and then registration marks line up. And then our side front goes in so again, the registration marks line up, the side lines up nicely, and then that all fits in underneath there, and we have the side front 
curving down from the six at the waist to the 18 at the hips with a hopefully functional pocket there. I mean, this to me makes sense. Hopefully it has made sense to you too, but you may never see this video because this may not work. And if it doesn't, I shall let you know. But if you are seeing this video, it does work, so yay. And we, the next step is obviously to cut out fabric. So I'm going to take all these pieces and get fabrics cut out. So it's October now and I have made a pair of these trousers and when I did all the alterations, I obviously added a lot of length to the crotch so that they would be high-waisted rather than hip level. And when I was doing that, I didn't really think through the opening to the pocket here. This was way too big for me. And then the pocket itself, again, I didn't really think that through, was quite shallow and I should have evened out this bottom curve here. So I have given those trousers to Nia and she wears them and she loves them and I'm going to do some alterations to this. So I want to make this opening a little bit less deep and I want to round out the bottom of these pocket bags and or the side front and the pocket bag so that they are just, they don't have that weird kind of jog there, which is what has happened because I've added a lot of extra width to the hip area because these were too small for my hips. I'm gonna build up this area, put some paper behind this so that I can build up this area here so I can then redraft the side front and the pocket bag here. So I need to get some spare paper to add into here and then I should be using my French curve. So I've just got some spare paper under there and I'm gonna tape it down. I'm going to put over the side front and match up the markings from the side front because I want to get this side front line put in correctly so that I know what I'm aiming for pocket bag wise and I don't really I kind of want it to be just a bit shallower like that so again I'm just kind of using my French curve and using the curved end of the French curve to kind of add in what I want for the pocket although that's probably too curved up so let's make that a little bit more gentle so yeah that's good. It's, I've added on, how much have I added on there? I've added on about an inch and a half to that area, which is great. So what I need to do now is take down this little piece up here so that that all behaves itself, which I've got there now. And I wanted to even out the bottom of this pocket bag here because it doesn't need that jog in it. I, this was this was where the pocket bag originally met, so I could just make this go straight across like that. The big piece I'm going to need to redraft is the pocket itself. So I'm going to tape the pocket bag or the side front down so that I can just add a little bit more paper along the bottom there. So I've stuck this down. I'm going to use my French curve. I've got the original point there and I'm just lining up my French curve with the bottom there so I'm just taking out that jog because that jog really wasn't necessary at all. So I'm going to cut this out. I do just need to stick a little more tape on there. To, re -get, to get my new pocket bag I am going to trace this completely like this and then I'm going to lay over this new curve over my second one of these trays so that I can cut out that piece and then I will end up with a pocket bag that will fit for my side front. So I'm going to get this piece cut out now and then we can trace the side front again. Okay so I have my trousers with the one and a half inches added to that piece there. I am, I have my side front, which now means that my pocket is actually deep enough rather than just being 
that deep there, it's now going to be this deep. And that's a nice big size. So I'm going to trace this out again so that I can then make the correct adjustments to, to make a pocket bag, as it were. So let's get that done. So I don't need this anymore. Get rid, of, get rid of that. And then I need my front trouser piece back because I need to line everything up and trace in the new side open a pocket opening. So I've remarked in my notches there because the notch as you can see is there. So I'm gonna make that my grain line. So I need to chop this piece, this piece out. We don't need that piece. So there I have my new pocket bag. So I can now start cutting out my fabric. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comment section down below and I will do my best to answer them for you. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!